Good morning, and thank you for checking out this edition of Power on the Block. I'm your host, Kim Kane, and Power on the Block is in your radio, in your community, and about the issues, and you know the deal. Each and every Sunday morning, we talk to someone from the community who has need-to-know uh, information, and this morning, we are joined by Judge Judy Kluger, and we're going to talk to her more about uh, domestic violence. Unfortunately, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and so uh, Judge Kluger is doing some incredible work with Sanctuary for Families and we're going to learn more about that organization. But first, I want to remind you, log on and connect with us online at power1051fm.com. You can connect with your favorite power personalities there. And, of course, you can connect with Power on the Block at uh, on our Facebook page at Power on the Block with Kim Kane. So with, with no delay, I want to welcome Judge Kluger to the show. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, most most definitely. And so, you know, as, as I just kind of, uh, you know, mentioned quickly, October has been declared Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And domestic violence impacts thousands of women, men and children uh, around the country. So I, I just kind of wanted to, to start uh, start there. So many more than thousands. Uh, basically, a domestic violence uh, results in about two million injuries and twelve hundred deaths across the country each year. Mm. It is sadly a still a uh, problem that exists in our society and has existed uh, almost for as long as there's been records of these kinds of things. Wow. So, I mean, even, even just to give our listeners an idea, in last year in New York, uh, the city police department responded to more than 282,000 domestic violence incidents. So just to break that down, that's more than 770 calls Every day. And when we talk about domestic violence, okay, um, you know, obviously what comes to mind is is physical abuse, but domestic uh, violence can be more than that. It can be mental, it can be economic, it can be sexual. Um, These incidents are rarely isolated and they can they can escalate. So um, Judge Kluger, talk a little bit more about the, the changing face of domestic violence. So I think if you go back to when uh, Sanctuary for Families, the organization I now run, uh, first uh, came into being, domestic violence was really viewed as something that was a family matter that uh, was not taken seriously by uh, whether it was the police, the community, the courts, society in general. And I think uh, the real significant impact that organizations like mine and advocates have had is raising awareness of the issue and the fact that it exists. It is not a family matter. It's a matter that we all have to be concerned about. And as you said, Kim, it is not just physical abuse. It's Domestic violence is really about power and control. And uh, the people who abuse others are seeking not only to hurt them physically, but to control them, be it the partner or spouse who monitors someone's phone calls who has to know exactly where they were every hour of the day, who is um, uh, controlling the, every aspect of their economic life, who do, does not share funds, and, and if the person is not working, uh, the, uh, the victim is not working, does not give them the resources to, to run a home or, or take care of their family. So it's a broad spectrum of abuse. Uh, I think on the positive side, uh, there is greater awareness and greater response by communities and others to the fact that this is not acceptable. Right. And and I, I want to talk about because, you know, when I think when a lot of us listen and we're, we're hearing what you're saying and we're learning about domestic violence, which, again, if, if you're just tuning in, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, w- the, the natural inclination is to say, why not just leave? Right. And so, I mean, that, that's what some, someone like myself would think. And there are many reasons that that people stay in situations um, where domestic violence is occurring. And that's fear for their safety. They may feel like they'll be isolated from their community and cut off from resources. They may have cultural or family pressures to stay again um, financial um, in independent dependence that's that's a, a big form of, of abuse concern for the children fear of deportation fear of the criminal justice system they may not leave out of shame or hoping that the abuser will change and I, I, I kind of wanted to to expand on that on that last one because the most dangerous time for a domestic violence victim is when he or she decides to leave. And, and that reason is because it's estimated that up to 75 percent of domestic violence related homicides occur upon separation. So, Judge, uh, you you have really done a lot of incredible 
work with with domestic violence, which we'll touch on a little bit later. But I just want to ask you what what forms of uh, protection are put in place for people who are doing their best to get out of those situations? Well, there are uh, domestic violence shelters uh, in New York City and around the country. Um, we actually run um, several shelters, and they provide um, a, pla- a safe place for um, uh, victims who, who leave. Uh, but as you said, it is very hard to leave. It is, uh, there are so many ties that you have. I mean, it's easy to say, and when I first started out in my work, I was a prosecutor, and um, I would have cases where the women would uh, go back to the abuser or would not be willing to leave. And I didn't understand it then, but with more experience and life experience and also experience in the area, uh, I realized that how difficult it is to leave. And not everybody wants to go to a shelter, and not everybody has another place to go. Uh, so um, there are organizations like ours, in addition to having shelters, uh, we can help a, a victim get an order of protection. And um, there is a, a view of that an order of protection is only a piece of paper, but in fact it has a tremendously uh, good effect on uh, reducing the incidence of domestic violence. Um, and our, uh, what we tell our clients who come to us We try and create a safety plan for them. Um, If they are not ready to leave or willing to leave, we will give them the kind of services that will help them stay safe. If you're just tuning in, we're joined by Judge Judy Kluger, and she is the executive director at Sanctuary for Families. And we're going to talk more about that organization because we want to make sure that you have the information and you know the resources that are provided to you at Sanctuary for Families or even for someone that you may know or or for a neighbor or a colleague or uh, someone who is is dealing with domestic violence, which, as as the judge has pointed out, it, it affects hundreds of thousands of people yearly and ex- especially in New York City. Uh, we gave some stats at the top of the show, but over 770 calls um, related to domestic violence and domestic abuse that, that happened um, in 2015. So, I mean, we, we really want to make sure that we are uh, giving information and and doing our part to inform our listeners and, and to inform you on what you can do if you find yourself in that situation and inform you what domestic violence looks like. And um, Sanctuary for Families is doing some incredible work. But I, I want to go back, um, Judge, to you know talk to you about your work, because prior to your appointment as executive director, at Sanctuary of Families, you served on the New York State Supreme Court for 25 years, and you were instrumental in launching special domestic violence courts and trafficking intervention courts. And then you've also served as an assistant district attorney in Brooklyn, where you led Domestic Violence Prosecution Bureau, where, where you led that bureau. So just just kind of expand a, a little bit. I mean, with this incredible career, and I mean, I'm sure you have helped so many women and men and children, um, just, just kind of share some things that you may have been surprised to learn in, in, in a position like yours. You know, I really, as I, as I referenced a little earlier, I really kind of, my career has kind of paralleled the changes in um, attitudes towards domestic violence. And uh, the courts were not the first to do that. We really, uh, I say we because in my former life I, I was a judge and part of the courts, um, it took us a little while to recognize that uh, even in the courts, domestic violence cases had to be handled differently with judges who understood the dynamics of domestic violence. And when you talk about being surprised, I was very surprised as a, a young prosecutor when judges would act as if these kinds of cases didn't matter and uh, think that you could say something like, well, it was just a fight, you know, she should just go home and behave herself. And, and actually those things were said 30-plus years ago. Mm, okay. uh, so we've come a long way, and what we did in the court system was train judges uh, on the dynamics of domestic violence to understand what's behind it, uh, the aspects of power and control, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and also, um, we did a lot of work on making the courts more navigable for domestic violence victims. Uh, I was involved in creating the integrated domestic violence courts, and the reason we needed that was that prior to uh, changing the way uh, the court system worked, victims of domestic violence had to go to three different courts. If they wanted a divorce, they had to go to the Supreme Court. If they wanted 
uh, remedies from the family courts. They had to go to the family court, and if they were involved in um, a criminal case, they had to be in the criminal courts. So just imagine what it's like for a family to have to navigate a system like that. Uh, also, judges were giving uh, conflicting orders of protection. So an order of protection may say that the abuser has to stay away from the home, and that might be given by a, a judge of the criminal court. A judge of the family court, not knowing all the facts, would give an order of protection that allowed the abuser to go home. So there were a lot of changes that came about over the years that I was very fortunate to be a part of. Um, I want to reference one thing you said earlier about uh, the impact of domestic violence and, and if you have a, um, a relative or a friend uh, who you think is a victim. Uh, we at Sanctuary uh, think about it in terms of not being a bystander to domestic violence. Mm -hmm. and whether it's um, a friend, a family member, or just men in general standing up and not being a bystander to the issue, uh, we think is so important in um, doing whatever we can to stop domestic violence and raising awareness. So uh, uh, it might be hard to say to someone, uh, you know, I think there's a problem and you should get help, but help is available and Sanctuary for Families, there is no charge. We have lawyers who can represent you in a divorce, in family court. There is no means test. Um, uh, you can come to us anonymously uh, to your partner or abuser. No one has to know and uh, seek our help. Yeah, and I, I, I appreciate that, that you circled back to that because that was something that I was definitely going to you know, bring up. I mean, I... I have unfortunately had to make a phone call because, you know, of a, of a situation in, in my neighborhood where I knew domestic violence was occurring and I just couldn't, you know, it's like you you get to the point to where it's just the hardest call to make. But in, in my case, I, I was thinking about the, the child that, that was in the house and thinking, well, if this is this loud and I am this far away from the home and I can hear it, think about this child inside or, you know, this this woman who is, is, is suffering through this, this situation. And, and I had to call and what I was told because the, uh, the local police ended up following up with me is that they wish that more people did that. And they, they realize how difficult that is, but it's like, it's, it's. Yeah. Yeah. But you did so the right thing. You know, when you mentioned children, aside from the fact that they're hearing this and it's, and sometimes they are victims as well. Uh, but even if not, I mean, you learn, what you see at home and yeah. talk about the intergenerational um, impact of domestic violence and the children of domestic violence become either the abuser or the one being abused so many times so uh, it's it's hard to pick up that telephone and and you kind of want to say you know what it's not my business but it is really everyone's business yeah that's that's the truth that is the truth if you're just tuning in we have judge kluger on the line and she's the executive director at sanctuary for families so i, I want to move along and talk about sanctuary for families again october is domestic violence awareness month so we're we're hoping to um give you some information on resources and sanctuary for families provides a lot in the three de decades since they were founded they've empowered tens of thousands of survivors to leave abusers by creating creating safe, independent, um, you know, uh, and, and create safe, independent lives for themselves and for their families. They provide shelter, clinical, legal, as you just heard, and economic empowerment services to over 11,000 New York residents a year. So um, they they are really doing some incredible work. So, Judge, I want to kind of turn it over to you and just, you know, talk about the services that you provide at Sanctuary for Families. So the way I usually describe it is that anything a victim of domestic violence needs, we will find a way to provide it. It could be a lawyer, a counselor, it could be our, our food pantry, it could be our butterfly boutique if someone needs a new dress or clothing or something for their child, job training, which is such an important part of our work uh, for a uh, victim to be safe, independent able to be on her own and not go back to an abuser, she has to be able to support herself and her children. And we have an economic empowerment program that has had unbelievable results. Uh, our uh, clients uh, go through a four-and-a-half-month training. Uh, it's a job readiness training. It's, it's hard skills in computer. Are, they become Microsoft certified. 
and we place them in career track living wage jobs so that they don't have to uh, be in a shelter or be um, go back to their abuser. Uh, and of course, our own shelter, uh, we have four emergency shelters in Brooklyn and a transitional shelter, Sarah Burke House in the Bronx. And I was just there yesterday. I try to spend uh, a day a month there just to be with the staff and the clients. And the it's a joyous place, even though people are there for a terrible reason. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm very proud of the work that we do and of our staff who are so committed and dedicated and um, I don't have to tell you that uh, salaries in the not-for-profit world aren't necessarily what they are in the private sector. And um, our staff make many sacrifices of their own to do the work that they love and that they think is so important. So uh, mm. I'm very proud of the work that we do. Yeah, it, it you know, so, so many organizations that we desperately need are, are really operated off of just the the kindness and the labor of love on on behalf of others. So, I mean, I commend your staff and and everyone there who is providing these resources. And and I don't want to just say to women, providing these resources to men, providing these resources to children. Oh, absolutely. You know, who who are affected by domestic violence. And it's it's such important work. So, you know, a big thank you to Sanctuary for Families and and yourself and and all, all the work that you're doing. And if you're listening... And you want more information, I, I want to make sure that you can uh, check them out online, sanctuaryforfamilies.org. And I, I will also uh, link back to that on Power on the Block's Facebook page if, if, you, if you're connected with us there. And that's Power on the Block with Kim Kane. You can log on and, and you can see the link back to Sanctuary for Families. But their phone number is 212-349-6009. And they are providing a ton of resources, including counseling, legal, shelter, economic empowerment, resources for children and youth, um, you know, working to end gender violence. They have three key strategies, direct services, outreach and training and systems change advocacy. So, um, Judge, I, I, I kind of wanted to move along and ask you what, what you would tell a woman or a man or a child who is in a situation where they are experiencing domestic uh, uh, abuse and they are listening to this show, what what would you tell them to encourage them to pick up the phone and call you or to reach out? We've already established that could be a really difficult thing to do. So what, what would you say if I'm like teetering on whether I should contact you or not? There is a better life out there for you. There is help, there is care, and there is a future. And uh, by making that phone call, You don't have to live in a dark place anymore. There is a future for you and your family. And there are so so many resources out there to help. I'm hoping that that provides some encouragement to someone listening who who may need it. And as we touched on, uh, Judge, I I don't want to keep you too long this morning, but as we touched on at the top of the show, and I want to go back to this because I think that this is really important. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So what I'm really wanting to do with this show is educate our listeners on what domestic violence looks like. So outside of the typical, you know, where where you, you, you think of, you know, about, you know, someone being beaten or someone being physically harmed, Domestic violence can be mental, it can be physical, it can be economic, and it can be sexual. So I just wanted to expand, um, Judge Kluger, and I know that you're very versed in these areas. If you can help to paint a picture for people of what a mental or economic type of abuse would look like. Well, mental would be constant yelling, uh, constant uh, that you haven't done enough or dinner is not on the table in time or uh, you didn't do enough for the kids. It's belittling. It's um, uh, the kind of language that can be uh, belittling and demeaning to a partner. Yeah. Uh, it can also be what I talked about a little bit before, trying to control your every movement, your every you know, your everyday life, not allowing you to leave the house except for certain times, needing to know every place where you are. So that's the kind of emotional and, and denigrating someone and uh, just uh, treating them uh, not as a, um, an individual of worth, breaking down someone's self-worth, which right. is what this is about. When yeah, pe- when people try and do this, and I mean that that can have g- just catastrophic implications in all oh, areas absolutely. of your life. I mean, 
my goodness. I, I think that, you know, un- unfortunately, maybe and I won't say all of us, but most of us knows what it feels like. Right. It's like, you know what it feels like when someone says something to you or and you can think of a time that someone has said something to you that just re- really cuts you down and that really affects your self-esteem. And you carry that. And it makes you second guess yourself. And it it just it manifests in, in all different ways. And if you can think about, you know, the, the people who are living in households to where that's just a daily thing they're living with someone who just cuts them down and demeans them and belittles them and nothing is ever enough and nothing is ever good enough or they're never attractive enough or they're never I mean that's just it's just no way to live and it is a form of abuse and and to speak further to that you know we we talked touched a little bit on economic abuse but I wanted to expand on that as well because I I think that there are more people who are suffering suffering from economic abuse, especially in recent years, right? When we, we, we've seen people who oh, have absolutely. lost their jobs or where their their hours have been cut back um, that, that may not even realize that, that they're victims of, of economic abuse. So, Judge Kluger, just expand on that um, uh, again, sure. please. And it goes to power and control again. Yeah. Someone who is controlling your resources. Uh, if you're working, I need to, to – your, your – check has to be deposited in my account and you can only get this amount of money and if you're not working uh, or sometimes there are partners or spouses that say I don't want you to work you have to stay home you have to keep uh, uh, take care of the kids and I'm going to give you only this much money a month and I only I want to know exactly where it goes so that is about control and the other thing to remember about whether it's mental um, emotional uh, economic abuse, that it often escalates to, to physical abuse. Uh, so there is a trajectory, and uh, generally somebody who starts out with those kind of actions can very easily go to the next level, which is physical abuse. And what I would say to women and men who are victims of that, don't wait till it escalates to the physical abuse. Seek help, get out of the relationship, uh, get the protection you need before uh, you can be physically hurt. So as, as you've heard in this program, Judge Kluger is the executive director for Sanctuary for Families, and they really help to provide freedom from, from gender violence. They help to rebuild lives, to provide resources, to educate uh, the community, to advocate for change. I really encourage you to log on to their website. They have so many resources. They have blog posts. They have a place where you can learn about their services if you're interested in donating, right? Sometimes it's just easier yeah, to drop a... Great. To, we always uh, yeah. We could always use the resources to continue with our work. So right. Absolutely. Yes, to, to drop a donation, as you've learned, a lot of organizations like this are operated off of donations and, and off of the generosity of others. And it is a labor of love. And they are doing so much work to protect the many people who are affected by domestic violence each year in New York. We've already touched on those numbers. But, you know, just to draw a clear picture for you, one in four women will be victims of domestic violence in their lifetime. And so, you know, it's it's really important to do all that we can to um, help and protect each other. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. If you log on to sanctuaryforfamilies.org, you can get more information on gender violence and on their impact and how you can help. So, Judge Kluger, before I let you go, was there anything else that you wanted to add for our listeners? My hope is that in another 30 years, Sanctuary for Families won't have to exist. And that will happen if all your listeners... uh, are no longer bystanders, but take an absolute stand on domestic violence. That's right. And and as we touched on again earlier in this program, it's very difficult, and I say so from a, a position of someone who has had, had to do that. Okay, so I've been in, in these shoes. It's very difficult to pick up the phone and to get authorities or to alert others when there is a domestic violence problem within your knowledge or within your earshot. If you're aware of something or you hear something or you know there's this ongoing situation, but Please, please, we implore you to think about the people that need protection, maybe the woman who is not strong enough to do it herself for the reasons that we touched on earlier during this show. There can be so many barriers to getting out of the situation or to the man who is not strong enough or to the child who may be fearful that their family will be ripped apart or, you know, of of all of these, uh, you know, repercussions from from notifying someone. But the, the truth is, as Judge Kluger so um, you know, perfectly put it is there's a better life out there for you and you don't have to live 
in these situations. And there are people who can help and who can provide resources. And uh, we just really want to thank you, Judge, and everyone at Sanctuary for Families for the really important work that you're doing. And thank you, Kim, for giving me an opportunity to talk about it and to hopefully get your listeners to um, think about what we do and how they can help. Most definitely. Sanctuary for Families. Check them out online at sanctuaryforfamilies.org. And I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this show. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Kim Kane, And uh, thank you, Judge Kluger. Thank you, Kim. And we'll check you out next week on Power on the Block right on this station, Power 105.1. Peace, y'all.